Let me ask you a question. Are you happy? It's not that easy to answer, right? See, we've got too many things in our minds. Work, career, finances, family, friends, pets, hobbies, goals, aspirations, things that keep us occupied all the time. How often do you stop and ask yourself, am I happy? Perhaps the question itself is too vague and philosophical, so let me scope it down. You're a software engineer, right? Are you happy as a software engineer? See, I find this question fascinating. Being happy influences so many of our life's outcomes, yet we rarely take time to step back and think about what actually makes us happy, let alone make it a priority to live a happy life. So in this video, I thought I'd do something a bit different and explore what it really means to be happy. But since this is a software engineering channel, I will do so in the context of software engineering. I'm going to investigate three things. Does happiness affect our performance as software engineers? Can we find data that correlates happiness and software engineering? And finally, can we leverage any of these learnings to make positive changes in our lifestyle that can potentially help us lead a happier life? Hi folks, my name is Utsap. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have over 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help software engineers get the best out of their careers by mentoring them around five key pillars of career development. Technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. And very occasionally, happiness too, I guess. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Utsavise for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. Okay, so let's first address the question, does being happy even matter when it comes to software engineering? Well, it turns out that this is an academic field of study and there has been adequate research that suggests that being unhappy can lead to decreased cognitive performance, mental unease and disorder, low motivation, work disengagement and disrupted flow, which results in low productivity, decreased process adherence and low code quality. On the other hand, happy software engineers have higher cognitive performance, higher motivation, higher self-accomplishment, high work engagement and higher creativity, resulting in, well, you guessed it, higher quality code. Okay, so being happy is important, but what does the data say? Are software engineers generally happy? If so, what makes them happy? So I looked at a few of the largest developer surveys to dig through the data. Different surveys have different processes and they interview different sets of people. So there is some variance in the data, but overall, all of them highlighted very similar areas. And I'll do my best to summarize the key findings without boring you guys. About 70% of all software engineers report being happy with their careers. Northern Europe as a region has the happiest developers. And here are the five things that have the most significant impact on developer happiness. Inability to get their work done effectively makes developers unhappy. Too many processes, meetings, etc. reduce morale and overall happiness. 49% of developers prefer to spend most of their time coding. Developers also want the freedom to work on projects that interest and challenge them. According to the survey results, 27% of developers stated that the biggest reason for staying at their current job was the quality of their projects. The more senior the developer, the less satisfied they are with their work environments and company culture. This could be an indication of ageism existing in tech, because according to research, apparently the average age that tech professionals begin experiencing ageism is 29 years old, compared to 41 as the industry average. Also, the environment you physically work on matters as well. 77% of developers prefer working beside a window, 64% prefer a quiet environment, 62% like bright lightning, and 59% prefer plants. Salary is the second biggest contributor to developer happiness. However, it must be noted that salary matters only to a certain point. Large-scale reviews of research confirm that the amount of income does matter, but only to the point of being able to afford a comfortable lifestyle. Beyond this, happiness seems to plateau in relation to salary and other areas that become more important. Work-life balance is the most significant contributor to developer happiness. 75% of developers cited this factor as very important, while 24% of developers rate work-life balance as the biggest factor in staying with their current employers. 
Also, experienced developers care more about work-life balance. 35% of developers with 10 plus years of experience value work-life balance the most compared to only 18% for less experienced developers. This may be because experienced developers are happy with their salaries or want more free time with their families, while junior developers may want to focus more on work. One crazy thing to note is that US came second in having the happiest developers, whereas countries from Northern Europe like Denmark, Finland, Austria, and Sweden came in first. However, developers in Austria, Finland, and Denmark work the least number of hours compared to developers in US who tend to work the most number of hours. Okay, so we have research showing that happier software engineers write better code and data showing what makes software engineers happy. Based on that, what can we try to change so that we can try to become happier as software engineers? Well, not every factor that affects our happiness as engineers is within our control. For example, we can't really do anything about our age, or maybe we love the work we do and the project we work on, but the salary is a bit too low, so there are naturally some trade-offs to be made. But I still think we can identify some areas where we can make conscious and deliberate efforts to improve our happiness index. The first option is to improve compensation. This one is thankfully straightforward. You can either get promoted to a higher level or switch jobs. There are a ton of resources out there to help you prep for your interviews. I also have an entire playlist of videos just for that. I will link them in the description below. However, if you haven't interviewed for a very long time and are not up to date with the fundamentals, it can be a very daunting task. For those cases, I recommend Formation. Formation have also sponsored this video and have been a long-term supporter of this channel. Formation is an online fellowship for early to mid-career software engineers who want to join top companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Figma, and more. Formation uses adaptive learning technology to create a custom program for all fellows, tracking their progress and closing skill gaps in a personalized learning roadmap. They have a team of engineers from top tier tech companies who have interviewed thousands of candidates and trained hundreds of interviewers during their tenure. Also, you guys know how much I stress the importance of mentorship in career progression and the immense value mock interviews provide when prepping for job interviews. Well, Formation provides engineering mentorship and unlimited mock interviews until you've got a signed offer letter in hand. Formation isn't just about prepping you to clear interviews though. Their fellows leave the program with the knowledge and confidence to thrive at the world's leading companies. On average, fellows who complete the program increase their compensation by $96,000. So if you're interested in checking out Formation's fellowship program, you can apply for free on their website through the link in the description below. And regardless of whether you are accepted into the program or not, you will get invaluable career advice from their assessment and a free interview prep guide that's a really useful resource for your interviews, especially at FANG level companies. Thanks again to Formation for sponsoring this video. The other thing to try is adding more flexibility to your work schedule. In 2023, a lot of companies are offering flexible work options. Unless your company is fully remote, I do recommend opting for a hybrid system where you go to the office occasionally. Being fully remote can add more flexibility, but also distance you from social interactions with your team, which reduces team bonding. While it wasn't as high as some of the other points I mentioned in the list, team chemistry was still a strong indicator of overall developer happiness. Then there is the question of how many hours to work. I couldn't find any data directly tying longer or shorter hours to happiness. And as I stated earlier, in some of the Northern European countries, only 14 to 18% of developers worked 40 hours per week versus in the US, 64% work 40 or more hours. But developers from both regions reported being equally happy. Personally, I tend to focus more on flexibility than an absolute number of hours because based on my experience, hours tend to fluctuate a lot. When one project ends, there is usually some downtime to relax and recover. Then the hours ramp up to the normal 40 or so hours until the delivery date when things are tight and you might have to push a little harder. So eventually it balances out. At least that's been the case for me. Flexibility matters much more to me because I can fill in the hours when I'm blocked or when I have downtime with other work that I need to get done. That way I don't have to allocate nine to five for my day job strictly. If I get everything done, when I work, how I work, or where I work from doesn't really matter much. At least that's been working for me, but your mileage may vary. 
Since the environment is also an indicator of happiness, I suggest you prioritize working in natural light. Since it's our day job, we tend to sit for long hours and doing so indoors in a dimly lit environment makes it much worse. According to the American Heart Association, sedentary jobs have increased by 83% since 1950, and an extensive review of studies published in the internal medicine found that even after adjusting for physical activity, sitting for long periods was associated with very serious health outcomes, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. Also, according to Dr. Andrew Huberman, morning sunlight and sunlight in general is one of the top five actions that support mental health, physical health, and performance. So your work environment not only makes you happy, but also has a direct correlation with your health and well-being. And these things are things that you can easily improve. So prioritize working near a window when possible. It doesn't have to be the entire day. Even if you can manage a couple of hours, go for it. Get a standing desk and set a timer to stand at least 10 minutes every hour. I personally stand for more than eight hours a day. You get used to it after a while. And also ask your manager or admin. Companies usually have a budget for ergonomic furniture as well. Growth opportunity is another major indicator of happiness. So if your project isn't exciting or challenging enough, push to get working on a larger scope or harder problems. That may require you to step outside your comfort zone, but the end result will be much more rewarding. In terms of resources that can expedite your growth as a software engineer, I have two recommendations, your manager and your mentor. If you don't have a mentor, find one. Most companies have mentorship programs, ask for one and participate in it. If your company does not have one, contact people you admire and ask if they can mentor you. One good rule of thumb to follow is to always make a good case for why would you love to get their mentorship. Just because you need it, they may not want to go for the extra mile and make time in their schedule to mentor you, so make it compelling for them. Finding a great manager isn't straightforward and is often a function of luck, but it is easy to recognize one when you have a great manager. I mentioned this in one of my other videos already, so I'm gonna simply reiterate it here. Great managers want to listen to you more than they want to talk. They always create a safe space for you to go and talk about your struggles and frustrations. They always give you credit for your work and celebrate your successes. They also give you the freedom to choose how you work and when you work if it aligns with clear expectations that they have set early on. Their relationships are based on trust. They do not micromanage. They also always support your technical and personal growth and in most cases even over project priorities. But above all, they are grounded and human. They treat you with empathy and respect, not just on other headcom. So watch out for these qualities and if you get lucky enough to work with a great manager, stick with them and be loyal to them. There are unicorns in the tech world these days that is driven increasingly by numbers and analytics. Finally, being productive is another important contributor to developer happiness. So learn about productivity systems, creating a second brain, time blocking, effective ways of information retention, so on and so forth. A lot of this is, as James Clear says, tiny changes you make in your day-to-day -day life that can bring about significant results. If you haven't read that book, by the way, it's called Atomic Habits, try it out. Another great book is The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Uh, in addition to that, learn about the flow state and how it works so that you can enter a deep focus state and get more work done in less amount of time. Another great book for that is Cal Newport's Deep Work. Regardless of how much you earn or how successful you are, if you're not happy, there will always be a void that isn't filled. So I hope this video at least gets you thinking about happiness, not just as a philosophical topic, but as a core metric for your well-being. Also, here's a complete playlist of all software engineering productivity videos I've made, so feel free to check them out. And also look at this other video where I talk about how I would go about becoming a software engineer if I would start all over again. Please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.